Welcome to the platform for investor education. Today we are going to talk about fixed income securities, also known as bonds. At its most basic, a fixed income security or a bond is nothing more than an IOU. A borrower, the issuer of the security, promises to pay a certain interest rate to the lender who is the purchaser of that security. The period of the borrowing can vary. It could be short term, one year or less. It could be longer term, 10 years, 20 years or more. Uh, people who borrow these money could be banks, financial institutions, insurance companies, other corporations. Lenders could be individuals who are buying these bonds with their personal savings or they could be some of the corporates themselves who have parked excess revenues in a place where they can access it easier. The interest rate on this IOU, bond, whatever you want to call it, can be fixed. It sometimes is known as a coupon, harking back to the days when people, people actually had coupons on a certificate that they would tore off and present to the bank. In today's world, these bonds carry interest which can vary as well and does not have to be fixed. Those are known as floating rate bonds. There again, there's variation. The amount of interest that's paid varies. The frequency, how often that interest is paid, also varies. The bond market in India is made up of two segments. The biggest and most dominant segment is the government bond market, known as the GSEC market. These are securities issued by the Reserve Bank of India on behalf of the government and the money received from this issue is used by the government to finance its short-term and long-term expenses. Uh, that amount is kind of large, it's about 58 crores of these GSECs are currently outstanding. A slightly smaller part of it is state-level borrowing, known sometimes as SDLs or state development loans, which are different states in the union borrowing money to finance their operating and investment needs. Whether it's the government at the central level or at the state level, the borrowings can be short term or long term. The long term interest, as we had mentioned before, could be fixed or varying, though most of the time it is really fixed. The short term instruments are often called treasury bills and they have maturities of 92 days, 180 days, up to 364 days a year or less. Those, unlike the bonds, don't pay a fixed coupon. There is no direct interest rate. The interest rate is implied. When I say implied, what I'm saying is that if the borrower wants to borrow 10 crores, then they will pay back slightly more and that difference becomes the implied interest rate that they are paying to the lender. The second and smaller segment of the bond market in India are corporate bonds. Just like with government bonds, these have long-term issues and short-term issues. The short-term issues are known as commercial paper. It is a smaller segment, only about 7 lakh crore of these are currently outstanding as compared to the 58 lakh crore in the GSEC market. Regardless of whether it's corporate bonds or government bonds, the issuers get their funds from either directly the banking system or by issuing securities to the general public or by placing them privately in the hands of large financial institutions like, for instance, the Life Insurance Corporation of India.